Geiger. Geiger. <laughs> Geiger. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to a very special Comics Pals comic book review uh, of Geiger uh, from Image Geiger. Comics. Um, this is, of course, by the creative team of Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, and Brad Anderson with Rob Leon on letters. Uh, thank you to Image for providing us with the advanced copy that allows us to bring this to you on release day. We are very appreciative. It's a shame you won't let us do it ever again after listening to this episode, but we appreciated the shot. I <laughs> hope they don't listen. No. Uh, okay, so so I think uh, before we get into any conversation about the issue, uh, I do just kind of want to comment on you know the context of this review. Um, Sean alluded to it on the show proper this week. Uh, of course, um, you know, Jeff Johns has been uh, accused of some pretty unsavory behavior as of late. And um, we, you know, this is not, uh, this review is not an endorsement of him or that behavior. Um, we're here to comment on the book uh, because it's a relevant book right now. So, um, yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. It's uncomfortable that we have to discuss it, but it's the reality of the situation. And like Gary Frank, though. Yeah, love Gary Frank's work too. So that's you know it, it is yeah, what it this, is. This is an acknowledgement of Gary Frank. Yeah, I'll give it that. Um, and they are co-creators on this one, so that you know his fingerprints are all over this. Um, so you know that that aside, let's dive into the book. Um, Marco, why don't you start? What did you think of it? Yo, this is rad. Um, definitely dug the. Doug the concept. Oh, you're a fan of Jeff Johns, huh? <laughs> yeah, big, big fan of Jeff Johns. Um, he's been in the news a lot. So, like, you know, I, I was like, oh, what's been going on? That oh, it must be his work. So, um, but yeah, you know, the, the the book was really cool. The concept was interesting, novel. Um, something about the, like, post-apocalyptic stuff, I dig. And so for, for whatever reason, the nuclear holocaust kind of situation is something that always interests me and um i like where he's going with this i like the the idea the plot the art is phenomenal and yeah man this was a strong strong debut how about you kill uh, it's interesting i feel like i've watched recently like three twilight zone episodes about this exact situation or close to it anyway a, a guy survives a nuclear uh wipeout or whatever and beforehand he sends his family into a bunker and then a bunch of people want in the bunker and they're really mean because he has a bunker um and then people in the future find the bunker uh and then the guy turns into the hulk that that's the plot of the hulk is bruce banner survives a nuclear thing and um i think i think what's Did interesting i have a stroke me, are we talking about the hulk now <laughs> you would you zone out keep up um i think what's interesting to me here is the mix of the stories uh you know those couple of twilight zone episodes like i said but then like the weird superhero thing that he has going on with with the main character whom I assume is Geiger. Yes. I'm not sure yet, but <laughs> yeah. And then what what really interests me is is the the end. Um the funny Las Vegas I don't know, kingdom, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm, it's like I'm, a casino that I'm like... interested to see how that fits in to this world. And my honestly, my hope is kind of that it's like this uh, messy sort of patchwork world. That's the vibe I got from it. Yeah. Um, I so I'm I'm with Marco. Uh, Post apocalypse, um, I vibe with as as a genre, and I think it's it's a really um, it's rife for storytelling, right? And yeah. it's also very uh, malleable. And I like that about it. Like this, this gave me almost like a saga vibe. Um, in that, 
what you just said, Kale, where I remember reading this and I'm like, oh, like there are all these kind of disparate parts that fit and don't feel like asynchronous, but also feel like they each could have been from a different series. You know, the idea of there being this, oh, it's a post-apocalyptic world and there's like a, a nuclear man who lives outside. Like that could have just been the setup, right? The idea of you know, this kingdom that kind of feels reminiscent of, like, Fallout, right? Where it's, like, a new world built on the bones of the old. Like, that is kind of enough for a pitch, you know? And, like, the fact that you have all those different kind of uh, tones mixing makes the world feel uh, pretty rich, you know? Because there's kind of this juxtaposition of, you know, our main character who is a holdover from the old world and then this new world that... Um, is starting to emerge, right? As you have a new generation of people who don't even remember what it was like before. I think what the character represents also is that merging of those two worlds. And I found that to be pretty cool. Um, yo, his dog is dope. Two heads, a little mini servers. And like can talk maybe? Like it seemed like they were like psychically communicating i yeah. i wasn't sure if that was actually happening or if he was just you know talking to the dog because companionship but yeah i definitely thought that, it, that he was just like talking to it um because he he specifically says what do you mean where are they as like like a response so maybe the dog somehow got an intelligence boost with the power that's kind of like, what i was thinking was that yeah. like they are like linked somehow mm -hmm. psychically or whatever because they were like he was like holding the dog when he got blown up mm -hmm, exactly uh and then the concept of like the the kingdom i think that's cool that's always a fun you know trope in post-apocalypse stories is there's this one person has consolidated power um and and if you that that back matter like the map um it, it's exactly to what Kale said it would be cool if like you have like different little mini kingdoms and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh th that's always fun stuff. The warring factions kind of mm -hmm. like fighting over the scraps of the old world kind of thing. Like yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, cool. That's why I hoped that is because I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, yeah. I, I think all that stuff works well. And um obviously the kind of like element of of him waiting for his family to come out mm -hmm, yeah. is, is interesting because you imagine that's probably not going to play out the way he wants it to um he's waiting for it to be safe to let them out i guess to let them out yeah, yeah. um but they don't know he's alive they don't know he's out there is right. the thing too does he know they're in there no right I that's mean, the, the corpses might be, but right, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of what I was saying, right? I don't know that that's gonna play out the way he's hoping, but right, right, I don't know. Um, the thing that you said, Marco, too, about the idea of like the consolidation of power and there being like these warring factions, that is obviously a pretty well worn thing in um, in post apocalyptic fiction, but I I think the idea of um, this kingdom being uh, like like inherited right like there was a king and the king yeah. passed it on to his son it wasn't like he died and someone else in the hierarchy took over like you would imagine right it's like a a truly royal situation um and is this is clearly like a younger he's maybe a teenager i don't i can't really gauge his age but like this is a guy who's trying to prove his manhood right like he wants to yeah. slay a beast and have glory and be a right you know this amazing king that everybody respects and loves and everything and that in this world is interesting. That is, again, not a necessarily a new thing in storytelling, but in the context of this world, that's kind of fresh. And you have to imagine, right, like he's mouthing off to this other guy who, like, runs, you know, his military or whatever. Like, that guy's going to fucking kill this kid, right? Like, <laughs> I would. I'd snap his fucking neck. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> he's going to get them all killed. Um, so I, yeah, I, you can already see like where there's, there's opportunities for good emotional beats and tension and conflict. And, um, I, I agree with what you, what you laid out, Marco, that it is like a strong first issue in terms of, um, 
you know, you've got like 30 pages to build a world, right? Like, what are you going to tell me about it? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, to compare that to like another book we've been reading, um, and, and kind of criticizing for not having that feeling nailed down, uh, it's like radiant black, right? Where it's like, I feel like we're being drip fed information about that world. Whereas this, I felt like organically, I got a ton of information that I can extrapolate things from and understand where it might go and, you know, kind of pique my interest and give me things to to pull on. That said, though, the I feel like the comparison there might be a little unfair just because you inherently get that, that world building because of the situation we're in. Sure. Um, That's true. But, but yeah, point taken in that, like, it's drip feeding us, like, who these people are and... Uh, what the larger narrative might be like here it's a pretty simple setup right this one guy is protecting his area and then the king gets mad that he's not able to access it boom story tell like like story um jeff johns i think is showing his uh his superhero leanings because when he transforms into that green looking my man my man has a cape yeah 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 he just straight up looks like a superhero. And he's carrying billy clubs. It's fucking cool. <laughs> it 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 uh it looks like um this guy looks like he would be a villain for like JSA or something. I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I was gonna ask what what do you guys think of of that? The design, the I don't know, the the way it looks like it works, the of the Geiger. <laughs> um, I I think it's a cool design. Uh, I I definitely agree with Marco that like it, it's striking, like it, it's 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 cool, you know. Um, mm. I don't. I think it like I like that it doesn't feel. Um, I've seen a lot of characters like this before. Mm-hmm. But this feels like a unique way to show them off. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't actually have a suit. He's got, like, that metal chest plate that is, like, very identifiable. And he's got, like, the cloak. And, like, he kind of, it kind of gives me, like, a Spectre vibe almost. Like, it's, 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 it's pretty cool. It reminded me of, I forget the, the villain's name from um, Batman Beyond. But he also turns green and is, like, radioactive and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. That's it, like, that's the vibe I got from him. And then to the the design on his, you could be look at his stomach. It has the radioactive like radioactivity sign. Yep. The three triangles or whatever, which is another cool like. It, it, it's cool that it's incorporated into like the way he actually glows and everything. He's kind of on the corner of his sticks too, which just makes him feel like even more <laughs> like a superhero. I'm like, all right, my man's got branding. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot see. What's his Instagram look like? Where are you gonna take y'all? Iconography. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, as overall, I I think this is a solid first issue. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot here, and a lot that um, that you can, I think, that you can get into, you know, and that like can uh, can give you an idea of like what you could look forward to. Did this feel uh very doomsday clock for you guys? I think the art did. The yeah. the art definitely did. The art. Yeah. I wouldn't say the, not the pacing of the story, but no, not necessarily. Maybe, maybe it's the art that, uh, I'm reflecting on in particular. But I don't know. Just the way the way it's got you know it's got the guy the guy who you know survives a nuclear blast or whatever, and we watch him get torn apart. And then he comes back as a, you know, a, a, and he glows. Yeah, it's it's got a Doctor Manhattan vibe to it. And then the uh, the back matter. The back matter was fun. It it, it felt like a like a, a little Eisner short. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was an interesting idea. I enjoy things like that in general. Like I, I definitely like a good little. I don't know, like like those little bits of of world building that like don't necessarily make sense to do, like in context, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the strengths of comics is that you can include things like that, you know, um, and kind of get some of that environmental storytelling. 
and it is the comic within that comic because he has it on the table. So it's cool yeah. that they like yeah. give you like that little sampler. It's like, oh, this is funny. This is like like this is what it's about. That's why he enjoys it. It's a little goof. It's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's got. There's a lot here. There's a lot here that I, that I that I think you can you can connect with. Um, and of course, really, really great, great art. So, uh, yeah, that's been our, our takes on Geiger. Geiger. Are you guys going to pick up number two? No. I mean, Image is going to send it to us for free, so I don't have to give Jeff Johns my money. So, yeah, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Kale's here for the content, not for the, uh, not, not to pay for it. My man, that is the Comics Pals promise. (laughs) (laughs) Pay us to read your book, and we will. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you want to let us know what you thought of Ganger, number one, or uh, if you'd like us to review number two, um, you can hit us, us up uh, at the the comics pals at gmail.com. Come join the Discord and write into us over there or wherever you get this episode. And if this is your first time with us, uh, we, of course, are the Comics Pals. We have a weekly Comics Pals podcast where we talk about uh, news, you know, everything going on in the world of comics and the related characters. Um, so if you want to keep your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the world of comics, that's a great way to keep up uh, by listening to our show every week. And then, of course, we've also got our uh, normal weekly comic reviews, which come out on Sunday. If you want to check out what we read this week, uh, we reviewed Strange Adventures number 9, X-Men number 19, and Beta Ray Bill number 1. Uh, and you can also go check out our reviews of... Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Invincible on the We Watch series for both of those. Um, we put out a lot of content these days, so uh, if this is your first taste of what we do and you liked it, uh, we got you covered everywhere else that these characters are and that there are books to be talked about. So uh, go check them out. Go check us out. Give us the likes, the shares, the subscribes. Let people know if you enjoyed it uh, on your social media, and we'll catch you next week for another Comics Pals review. <laughs>